Hello friends, today we are going to see how to do one anastomosis gastric bypass surgery. This is a very popular bariatric surgery in which first you have to make a gastric tube and then minimum length of this gastric tube should be approximately 12 centimeter and after that you will calculate the jejunum from the ligamentum trees that should be 2 to 2.5 centimeter depending upon how fast you want resolution of the comorbidity and reduction of the weight and after that you will do loop gastrogenostomy. So this is a very popular surgery and nowadays it is also called realistic bariatric surgery. It is reversible also, it is cheaper and it is 60 to 80 percent of the excess weight loss is there at the end of one year. So it is basically a malnutrition surgery and difference between the RYGV is that you are making a gastric pouch and you will make a rule limb to do gastrogenostomy but here you do not have to make a rule limb here you will do the loop gastrogenostomy it is also called mini gastric bypass. Professor Rutledge has performed this surgery and after that slowly it is becoming popular all over the world and this surgery can be performed less expensive means cheaper than the sleeve gastrectomy because number of stapler required is little less than the sleeve gastrectomy. So let us see how to perform this surgery we can see here this gastric tube and the loop anti colic you have to make retro colic gastrogenostomy is not required in this surgery and uh, it has a lot of advantage. So we can perform with the 5 port and patient uh, will be positioned in the supine position first and during access you will be left this is the umbilicus inferior crease this is supra umbilical port. <clears throat> Nathanson liver retractor may be required and you may do without this this depends upon your requirement and depending upon the size of the left lobe of the liver. One right hypochondrium and one left hypochondric port is used. So here we are doing access by various needle this is the small stab wound is given over the inferior crease of umbilicus and 20 centimeter variational is used you may ask your assistant to lift the abdomen and keeping variational perpendicular but oblique to the body of the patient it is introduced after that you will do irrigation test followed by suction test and then hanging drop test. just to make it sure that we are inside the abdomen and then we will attach the tubing of insufflator. Here we should select the bariatric mode and the initially flow rate should be 1 liter per minute and after 1 liter of the gas you can increase the flow rate to 3 liter per minute and according to the size of the patient the minimum amount of gas required is 1.5 liter and maximum 6 liter to reach the actual pressure at preset pressure of 15. Now this is the supra umbilical port which you will introduce and that will be for the telescope. Right now camera person is in between the leg but once the all the port you will introduce after that you may go to in between the leg and camera person may come right to you it may be performed standing right to the patient depending upon the you know height of the table patient should be a stir up position this is one right hypochondrium and then one left hypochondric port here both the right and left hypochondric port should be 12 mm so that you can put your stapler using any of the port. Initially when you will take a 
horizontal stapler then you can keep in the right and then left here we can see this is the Nathanson lever retractor which is introducing into the epigastric port and first you will put 5 millimeter port and then this Nathanson lever retractor has to be introduced percutaneously and it is lifting the left lobe of the lever. Now approximately 12 centimeter below the gastroesophageal junction, you have to make a window in the lesser curvature so that you can first take horizontal row of division and here we do not have to remove the short gastric on the greater curvature, we have to work in the lesser curvature here and first we have to make a small tunnel that is retrogastric tunnel so that we can introduce our stapler to do the horizontal row of division. So, we can see that left hand you should have the grasper and right hand has a ligature to make a dissection over the lesser curvature on the momentum to make a retrogastric tunnel. Care should be taken that you should not be near the secondary gastric pedicle or bleeding should not happen in this situation and little stomach should be fully deflated, it should not be distended and now we can see this tunnel has been formed and posterior wall of the stomach is started visible. This is the posterior wall of the stomach which we can see. Caudate lobe of the liver is also above and right to you and this tunnel is formed. Now the first stapler here should be the blue color because we are not firing it over the antrum. So this will be you may use white or blue both you can use <coughs> and this is the horizontal row of division. Here you should not take the entire 60 mm, you may take 45 or 30 mm is enough and after that you should put a bougie that is 36 French gastric calibration tube your anesthetist will put and then once this horizontal row of division is over then we have to do the vertical row of division. So, this bougie is introduced and now to do the vertical row of division you may put the stapler on the left hypochondrium but before that if there is any adhesion in the posterior wall of the stomach that should be cleared because if the patient has you know history of gastritis and a smoker or alcoholic you may have a lot of adhesion in the posterior wall of the stomach that also should be taken care of and this is the vertical row of division which you will fire the blue cartridge and it is slowly dividing. Generally what we do that after every firing we wait for 20 seconds and then slowly we continue, we do not fire all of them in one go. So this is the first vertical row of division and after that again you can wait for a few seconds and then you open the stapler so that there will be no any oozing. Now we will load the new cartridge that is again blue color and again it will be fired vertically up to the angle of his. We can see some adhesions are there near the spleen, those adhesions should must be separated so that once you fire you should see the tip of the stapler 
especially once you go at the level of gastroesophageal junction. Here you don't need to make a big dog ear because it is not a restrictive surgery. So, there is no high pressure zone. So, in this you don't need to have the big dog ear. So, this adhesion near the spleen is getting separated. So, that your stapler can work better. We can see here surgeon is standing in between the leg, left hand has a grasper, right hand has a ligature. So, you have to lift the stomach, grasper is lifting the stomach as you can see and slowly these adhesions are getting separated. Care should be taken that any tear on the spleen should not happen because if a spleen started bleeding then it is difficult to stop that bleeding in this part of the area because it is quite high and that is why we should use 45 centimeter instrument and telescope also should be supra umbilical. So, now this is the second cartridge which is firing. As we can see that after every firing we wait few seconds, so that this compression will create plastic deformation, fluid will displace and the tissue will be better and it will be stapler line failure will not happen. So, slowly you will keep on firing till the end and you should must check that entire stomach is cut. If any little area of the stomach is still left then you should use the another cartridge, you should not apply any knot or clip to prevent any leak. So, we can see that it is done, but still little bit tissue is remaining. So, in this situation you can load the third cartridge, so that it will not leak and this is the third cartridge and tip should must be visible in the last cartridge and then we should fire. So, we can see it is almost touching the diaphragm and the both the jaw of the stapler cartridge the stapler is visible and then this is the last firing which will complete our vertical row of division and the gastric tube will be ready. A small gastric tube should not be there because that can create the biliary reflux and uh, this is requirement for one anastomosis gastric bypass. In RYGV this requirement is not there because already you have a rule limb that will prevent the biliary reflux. So, we can see diaphragm is visible <coughs> and this is the last cartridge which is firing. And now the gastric part of the surgery is over and the body of the stomach is detached from the gastric tube. After that, now we have to go to the ligamentum trees, for that we have to lift the entire omentum and transverse colon and find out the origin of the duodenum. So, this omentum and transverse colon is getting pulled and this is the bowel grasper, you should you lose long jaw grasper. We should not use short jaw, jaw grasper that will be little traumatic to the bubble. Because patient is obese, so you will get a lot of momentum of course and you have to walk over to find out the first part of the jejunum.
this is the ligamentum tree and we can see now further pulling of the jejunum is not there. So, that means we have reached to the correct point and after that you have to walk over to the bowel so that at least 2 meter of the bowel should be there. So, this is now we can see this is the first part and now it will be calculated. So, this is 1 <coughs> sorry here this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 every time 5 centimeter will be calculated this is 5 and here is the 6 all the bowel loop we should keep on the left side this is 7 so that torsion should not happen here is the 8 this is 9 then 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39 and 40. So, 40 means approximately 2 meter every time we have a 5 centimeter and then this gastric tube is getting perforated. The buzzy should be visible and after that anti mesentric border of the this jejunal loop has to be perforated. Care should be taken that it should be full thickness perforation and you should enter into lumen maybe only serosa should not be only open entire lumen should be open and posterior wall should not be damaged and now this stapler is getting introduced one jaw will enter into the jejunum another jaw will be in the gastric tube and then here side to side anastomosis will be done and that will be gastric jejunostomy. Now, how long this anastomosis should be there? This is controversial. Some people they use only 30 mm, some people 45 mm, and some they do complete 60 mm. If you will make a long anastomosis, chances of dumping syndrome is there. But some people they say dumping syndrome is good because that way patient will not overeat. Now you can see anastomosis is over and the posterior wall of the anastomosis is visible and that is good. There is no any bleeding and it is dry. After that you have to close this gastrojejunostomy site 
the perforation and that should be full thickness and uh, out to in and in to out. Here we are using simple 20 vicryl, but you may use the barb suture either V lock or strata fix. Outcome is same, there is no any difference. If you will do the good anastomosis, then leak is less in the OAGB compared to sleeve because it is a low pressure zone. In the sleeve gastrectomy, above is the gastroesophageal junction, a sphincter, also figal sphincter, below is the pylorus. So, it is a high pressure zone, and then chances of leak is there. But in OAGV, generally, if you properly perform, leak will not be there. So, this is the surgeon's knot which is given. If you are using V lock suture, then surgeon's knot is not required. Because in V-lock suture already you have a loop and you can pass the needle through the loop and that will be your starter knot. So, now we have the starter knot is done. In vehicle you have to tie a starter knot and after that slowly slowly we will keep on taking a full thickness bite to close this opening which was made for a stapler. So, this will be continuous suturing. Here the port is ipsilateral which we are using for suturing. It is better you can use contralateral as well and it should be slowly closed. left hand is lifting the vicryl. You may close this by a stapler. So, you can pass a bougie from a stomach and that bougie will go to the afferent limb and then you lift it this opening and you can pass a, a stapler that is also possible. So, we can see that it is a anticolic gastrogenostomy, not retrocolic, and right side is the afferent limb, means your right, not the patient right, and left side is the efferent limb. Here assistant also can help you, if assistant will hold the suture, then your suturing will be little faster. We also use barb suture, in barb suture you have little faster suturing and uh, 
there is less chances of leak compared to simple vicryl but bob suture has little memory so you have to be careful lifting the needle is little difficult with the bob suture vicryl doesn't have a memory and if you use rapi vicryl that is white white color then it is much better so this is all actually we have not edited this part of the suturing so you have to little bit wait for the entire suturing to be complete we have not edited this video much so entire suturing is visible so this is reaching to the another end and then corner suture will be taken we should inspect the posterior wall also so that there should not be any discontinuity and this is the closure of the corner of the perforation and after that you can return back by taking zero muscular white and this is the second layer just to cover the first layer
and now with the same tail you can terminate it that is the starting tail of the surgeon's knot. After that, we should check the leak and for this, we should take 50 cc methylene blue dilated in normal saline and then you can ask your anesthetist to put it and we can see it is bulging but not leaking. So that is good, that means anastomosis is okay and there is no leak. Once you are satisfied with this test, then surgery is over. But sometime what you can do? You can take a bite on the proximal loop and you can anchor with the stomach and distal loop with the antrum and you can do the omentoplasty, omentum you can drop over that. So, we can see it is distended and there is no methylene blue leaking. So, this is the afferent loop and a seromuscular bite is taken and that is sutured with the stomach so that there will be no much tension over your anastomosis site. This is optional, this is not necessary to do. The suture was little long than the desire because you know most of the intracorporeal suturing we should do by the 20, m, 20 centimeter suture. If your suture is long, then tail will become long once you will pull it. After that, we are putting a momentum over that anastomoting site, and then you can take a bite. This is the efferent limb. And together with this is the stomach. And then you can take a bite on the momentum and you can suture it together. So that entire anastomosis will be covered with the momentum and that will be a type of omentoplasty. So this is a bite taken on the momentum and to terminate it you may use Aberdeen termination or simply you may apply one clip oil as well. 
this titanium clip will not apply the allow the suture to go back so it will be easy to terminate so we can see an entire anosmotic site is covered with the momentum and then one clip is applied to prevent it going back So thank you very much for watching this video. This was just a simple case of one anastomosis gastric bypass and uh, patient BMI was approximately 48 and we are expecting that it should have desired outcome after few months. So thank you very much, have a nice day.